Today we're going to talk about something that's um, on a lot of people's minds. YouTube money. How much money do you make on YouTube? Well, uh, let me explain that in simple terms. If I work really, really hard and carry on churning out videos at the rate I do, maybe in about five years time I'll be able to afford a pizza. There's no money in YouTube. There's no money making YouTube videos. At least not for 99% of the people who are on YouTube. Most people just do it because they enjoy it. It's fun. Um, let me explain it this way. Many years ago, before the invention of this thing, the interweb, people used to write letters with a pen. People used to write letters with pens, stick them in envelopes and send them overseas. They were called pen pals. Right. You'd have a pen pal in France, you'd have a pen pal in Germany, a pen pal in Canada, America, and you'd keep in touch that way. And so you got to learn about different people's countries and how they, uh, how they lived and that kind of stuff. And um, it was great. So this is the modern day version of a pen pal. When I began my journey on YouTube, it was a complete fluke, complete accident. I've been contributing... Um, articles to an easy and they asked for some videos so I put some videos onto YouTube because I thought well, else at the time there was no other way of um, storing videos that was easily accessible so I put a couple of videos on YouTube and then linked them into my articles well those videos got a lot of views to me I thought that's a lot of views like 66,000 views is a lot of views for someone like me because I'm you know I'm not a YouTuber I wasn't a YouTuber, but I didn't understand what YouTube was about at all. I really didn't get it. I've always made videos. I've made videos for as long as I can remember. And um, so basically YouTube is a pen pal system that uses video file sharing instead of letters. That's my conclusion. And the vast majority of people thoroughly enjoy it. They don't do it for the money. There are, you know, you get a lot of talk every now and again, you get this like ripple goes through the community, YouTube money. So there's nothing about, it's nothing to do with money. So I can hear you all jumping around and screaming and going, yeah, but look at all that PewDiePie and Casey Neistat and all that kind of thing. Well, Casey Neistat was a filmmaker and he's a great guy. I, I like his videos. PewDiePie, um, I have no clue how he is so successful. But he obviously touches a vein somewhere. There are people who are making considerable money from YouTube, but they are in a very, very small minority. You know, they're a tiny, tiny fraction. And the chances of you or me getting to that position are remote. But they're not impossible. That's the point about this thing and the interweb, is that anybody can actually achieve whatever they want. That's what this does. This is what the web has done. The web has made a level playing field for people. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are thinking, oh, if only I got the right camera, if only I got the right microphone, if only I got the right this, that and the other. They're just excuses for not working. You go with what you've got. You work with what you have. As long as it's 720p, that's like the minimum requirement now. Or your camera. It's got to be able to shoot in at least uh, 720p high definition and most smartphones most smartphones today like this or your iPhone 5, 6, 7, 8 whatever number it's at at the moment that's got a perfectly adequate camera to do uh, YouTube videos very very good camera in fact the audio on uh, iPhones is exceptionally good um, the audio on my phone is brilliant the audio on my camera is awful but, you know, I'm working on it and uh, we'll get there. But I'm not going to go out and spend loads of money on equipment. For example, you all know about this thing, right? This thing, I bought this for £51, which is like $62, which is nothing. It's a high definition camera. And I did it because I wanted to go out and get some shots, some aerial shots. <laughs> because I was watching YouTube videos and they had these lovely landscape shots and I thought, Wow, that looks good. So I got a little cheap quadcopter for Christmas. I bought a deal, as you probably know. 
here's the helicopter that I got in the deal. Look, I haven't even flown this thing yet, but yeah, you know, this was part of the deal. It was like cheap as chips. So I bought a load of uh, quadcopters and and um, but I wasn't happy with the camera. The, I wasn't happy happy with the, the footage that came off the video camera on the quadcopter. So I bought this. So they're two things I would have bought anyway because I just like making films. I didn't buy them. I didn't buy them for YouTube. I bought them for me. And in fact, after the debacle that I had with this, I won't be using this to, because uh, this is 4K. It took hours to upload anything. So I'll, I'll use this, but I'll only use this for films that I'm making for myself. If I have a high broadband connection stuck in, then I'll be using this. Other than that, I won't be using it as 4K. It does work at 720p, 1080p as well. I can still use it, but I haven't spent any money at all on anything. All of my software is free. It's Windows. It's uh, Windows Movie Maker. Your questions. Vicky asks, how do you use your camera when you're out walking around? Your how, how do you hold your phone? Well, look, this is my camera phone. Well, it's my phone. But the camera is at the top there. So I always have it at that orientation. The microphone is over here. And I literally do it like that. I walk around like this. Hello, how are you? <laughs> literally, I don't care. I don't care. People look at me in the street and go, look at that crazy. But I've been doing this. I've been doing this for, I've been doing this for a very long time. I mean, I was doing this back in the 90s with a big camera like that you know people used to look at me and go what's that guy doing over there so I was vlogging before vlogging even got invented the word was even invented um so yeah that's what I do Vicky I just use I hold my phone and I just frame it up I frame up my shot and then fire away and this is a very good phone this is a very I mean it's a very Reasonable. It's mid-range. It's not an expensive. It's not an expensive phone. It's a mid-range phone. It's called a ZTE Blade v V7 Lite. There's a mouthful for you. But it's a very good phone and ma amazing phone. And uh, I use it all the time. Craig mentioned uh, yesterday about the sound. I uploaded a video yesterday, and this is like uh, this is an ongoing thing. I don't know what's going on, but um, I upload videos to YouTube. All my settings are exactly the same every single time. But the way it handles those videos is kind of weird. Like one minute the sound is perfectly fine and the next minute it's like inaudible. It's totally silent. So we've been going around and around with this. So I spoke to, I spoke to Paul uh, Wheatley about it. I spoke to Craig about it and they're trying to help. But it's nothing. there's nothing we can do. It's, it's just the way it is. So... The weird thing about it is you upload the video once and it comes out silent. You upload the same video, this happened yesterday, you upload the same video five minutes later because the first one didn't work. You upload the second one and you can now it's audible, now you can hear it. So, And nothing's changed, I don't know what's going on, there's something very strange. It's not my laptop, my laptop is not the issue, there's something going on. I don't know what it is, but there's some. There's a few glitches that I wanted to mention to people as well. That, that Paul has had this problem. I was, when I first started doing this about a month ago, I saw Paul uh, Paul W complaining, going, "Ah, oh, these coins," <laughs> and I thought, "What's the problem?" Well, now I know what the problem is. It's a nightmare. The pro the comments don't turn up, or they turn up and they disappear, or or they turn up three days later or four days later. And everyone gets out of sync. Everyone gets out of synchronization with the comments. Now you imagine if we're talking about being pen pals and then I write you a letter and then you write me another letter and then, because that's what we're doing, we're, we're commenting. And that your letter doesn't turn up for four days and then I write another four messages to you and I think, oh, what's happened? She fell off a cliff or something. <laughs> what's happened to that person? And then your comments start to cut and they'll, they'll kind of look weird because they don't they don't line up properly and it gets really confusing and like Vicky wrote one a couple of weeks ago a couple of days ago she went something about um <laughs> what was it um something to do with the 4k camera something to do with the 4k camera and the daffodils and she said uh 
she she's writing this conversation. Her and Angela are having this conversation back and forth. I didn't have any, I had no clue. Uh, Angela and Vicky were having this conversation back and forth about this 4K video, and then they've answered the question. They've answered, actually answered the question that they was trying to figure out from me. And then I came in late and I thought, hang on a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on here? And then you realise that the, the comments are out of sync, but it's funny. It's so funny. And I'll tell you another thing that I find really funny is the uh, the YouTube auto-generated um, closed captions. You know, when it does the captions, it does, oh my God. I was looking at one of them. It had swear words in it. Now, this is YouTube's putting its own stuff up there. I didn't put it up there, but they've put this, it was on the, um, this, this on the Lebanese playlist. I've changed it now anyway, but it was like, F-U-C-K, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, what the hell? This is supposed to be a computer, you know, analysing the text, analysing the dialogue and, and putting the thing, and it's using swear words. So that's a bit strange. But anyway, that was my day. But one more question. Michael asks, what is a molometer? Well, a molometer is a Google whack. Okay. There's one scratching their heads. What's a Google whack? A Google whack is a word that is not in the Google index. It doesn't exist. I made it up. It's a tag. It's um, from a long time ago, uh, before some bright spark invented hashtags. To try and find your work online was rather difficult. So the simple thing was to have a, a tag, you know, a name that you could put into every piece of work that you did. And then you could be able, you'd be able to trace it. Before um, Google came along and other search engines, there was a very, very simple search system. And you could put in a, a, a word search. So you could put in a word and you'd find it back in the steam days of uh, the internet. And um, that's what I did. So it's called a Google Whack. Don't know why they appropriated it, because it was around before they were. But it's a Google Whack. Basically, it doesn't exist. Now, in, a, in, a, in an act of outright self-promotion, if you do a Google search on Molometer, you will find everything I've ever done on the web. And, you know, if you want to go and have a look at that, great. A lot of it's uh, academic and probably dull as dishwater for most people. But yeah, uh, there was a time when at one stage I had about the first 10 pages, If you, because um, it's, obviously it's all me. If you type in Molomir into Google, uh, you'll get loads and loads of stuff. The interesting thing about having a tag like that is that you can trace your work and it ends up in some of the most bizarre places. For example, when I was working on that easing over in San Francisco, um, the whole website was stolen. They stole the whole website and stuck it on a server over in China or India or somewhere. And um, so all of our articles, all the people that wrote there, had all of their stuff pinched. I, every now and again, I trace, I tried to trace uh, where things have ended up. And they end up in the most bizarre places, like, you know, there'll be like an article about uh, bird shock chorioretinopathy, which is a, a, something I'm interested in. It's a very rare disease. And um, I wrote about it, and that article was ended up in a journal, a medical journal in Uzbekistan. So that's quite interesting. So your stuff, you know, you can trace where your stuff goes quite easily. In the next few weeks I'll be uploading more videos to the Lebanon and Kuwait playlists because I've still got a lot of material to go through on that and uh, I'll carry on doing the vlogs. See you next time.